Hello. Let's learn about the keyword from that you use for importing. You might like the keyword from in this context, where I say from math import pi. Then I only bring in pi to my namespace, not the whole module math. And when I use pi, I don't have to say math dot. Well, Truthfully, I don't like it. I like to know where that pi is. And also, I could accidentally change that pi. I could make it pi equals 4 and ruin the universe. So I don't like that. But people do. And some modules are written intending for you to, from that module, import everything with an asterisk. That's what that means. Import all the names in that namespace and bring them into this namespace. And hopefully whoever designed the module made it so that only meaningful names come in that you won't be writing over. Okay, here is mod one. And I wrote it with the idea that it would be imported with an asterisk. It has in it two attributes, immutable and mutable, and two functions, print mutable and print immutable. Let's import it with a star. Here we're doing it in the interpreter from mod one, import asterisk, and I can run print immutable, and I'm not surprised that it's got a one because that, that's what it has for the immutable identifier. Well, here I'll change it to 2. And when I print immutable, it gets the original mod 1 version. When I print immutable, all lowercase, I'm getting the local version. Well, I find that confusing. When I do print mutable, I get that list. Here locally, I'm going to say that the mutable of 1 equals A, and I see it. In my local version, that's what I have. But if I print immutable, I get back to the mod 1 version. Well, you can understand that. That when I have various identifiers on the same list, they all see the same list. But with an immutable type, when I make a new immutable, it is here and it hasn't touched the one back there. I find that confusing. Did I say that? If I try to move that immutable again back in mod 1, I can't do it. The word mod 1 is not in my namespace. Here I can import it, same run, and I'll make that mod immutable be no, and I print it with a function back there in mod 1, and I get no but I still have two for my local version. So we have split the versions of a mutable. Through the mod one mutable, I'm going to make the zero with element of my list be harsh, and all versions see that as they should, because it is a mutable list. Okay, that's one of the problems with it. You'll experience another one with a little lab. I can, if I prefer, when I do my from line, I can say from mod 1 import and then just comma separate the various items I'd like to have come into my namespace and I get some control that way. There have been various attempts to fix this up for people like me who find it uncomfortable. One is in your module, if you start identifiers with an underscore, then when a consumer imports your module with a from and an asterisk and does a dir, you'll see that we only have the items that don't start with underscores. However, if my consumer imports the items with underscores, they will get them. Another way to take control if you are writing such a module is to provide a magic all. And in that, you put the string version of the identifiers you'd like to have imported with an asterisk. Here I put them in a tuple. 
So now I have a mod 3 with the magic all. And when I do a uh, import of everything in a dir, I see that I only have the items I specified in my magic all. However, if I try hard as a consumer, I can get what was unintended. But then I know I'm shooting myself in the foot. Another little keyword that you'll find useful, and I have no complaints, I like a lot, is the as keyword in this context. I could import mod 3 as other, and from now on I can use the word other instead of the word mod 3. In fact, I don't have the word mod 3, so I can set others immutable to 88. And when I do other print immutable, I have that 88. So this could be very useful because we will see when we get to packaging that what we import can be a very long name. And we would want then to give it a short name that has meaning. Neither of these names have any meaning. Okay, give yourself five minutes to give some thought to the exercise. See if you guess this right. I'll see you in just a few minutes.